just want to go through some data I have from Tafranui Marine Park, which is down uh, south of Lee. I've been monitoring fish and crayfish in that area for, for over 33 years now. And uh, the northern part of this park is a marine park, which in this case means no fishing. The green line shows the actual boundary of the marine park itself, and inside that area, no fishing is allowed. Outside, all around this area, uh, uh, and over here, fishing is allowed. And I've been monitoring fish and crayfish stocks at all these sites marked with a little yellow dot for a long, long time. The difference between the protected area and the fished area is now quite dramatic. And if we look at crayfish in particular, this is uh, numbers up here, and this is time across here from uh, 1978 through to uh, April this year, 2010. And the um, protection came in in this area where that dotted line is, around about 1981. In the front, there's uh, little blue squares, pretty hard to see because the numbers are quite small. That's what happened in the unprotected zone outside the park. Meanwhile, in the protected zone, the numbers of crayfish dramatically increased. And even after, what, 29 years or so, it's still increasing. The numbers of crayfish are quite astronomical. There's something like 800 to 1,000 legal-sized crayfish per hectare in the protected area. You go just outside the park and there's virtually none and that equates to something like a thousand kilograms of legal sized crayfish per hectare. Quite dramatic. Not only have there been changes in the crayfish, but also the habitat has recovered. We talked about uh, kinnebarrens before. Um, this is a, uh, a map of the underwater habitats that I uh, did at Tafranui just a, two or three years ago. And this is the park boundary, so no fishing in here. These are the underwater shallow reefs. The purple and the green refer to types of kelp forest, and there's continuous kelp forest on these reefs. You go just outside the park, only 500 metres outside it, and suddenly you get this pale blue zone between the purple and the green. That pale blue represents kinnebarrens, and that is the case all the way right up to North Cape, wherever there is not a protected area, and down to East Cape as well extensive kinnebarrens on these shallow reef areas. Inside the protected area, once the crayfish and snapper numbers have built up enough, they've actually managed to get rid of the kinna back down to a natural, natural level. And after something like 15 years, it takes a while for the snapper and the crayfish numbers and sizes to get big enough to actually uh, deal to the kinna and get them back to a natural population level. Once they have done that, the kelp can come back again. And that's what we see here. The kinnebarrens have disappeared on these reef areas. We'll have a closer look at this reef, which is Comet Rocks. And that's an aerial photograph showing the intertidal reef here and the shallow subtidal rocky reefs here. They all look a dark color. That's because they're covered in kelp. And if we look at the next picture, that's what it looks like underwater. Rich kelp forest, and underneath that kelp forest, there's a lot of sponge-like rhizomes, all sorts of biodiversity there, which is uh, healthy for the ocean. If we look at Pukinihi Nihi Point, which is just outside the uh, protected area to the west, you can see there's some dark-coloured kelp-covered rocks, but a lot of the rock is very pale-coloured, all the stuff here. That is because it has lost its kelp, and it looks like this very pale colour, just with a lot of kinna, keeping that kelp from growing back again. Quite dramatic difference in ecology, and this is what has happened through fishing effort in the last 50 or 60 years all around northeastern New Zealand. Major ecological change brought about by fishing. If we look at Nimifongata Marine Park, another marine park on the northland coast, uh, north of Whangarei, this has also been a marine park uh, since about 1984, and this park, though, still allows recreational fishing. It doesn't allow commercial fishing, but recreational fishing has continued, and I've been monitoring fish and crayfish at 
Mimi Whangata and Tafranui Marine Parks since the mid 1970s. So I have something like uh, five decades uh, with with data. Uh, there's not many um, marine monitoring programs that actually span such a long time frame. So it's quite valuable data going back a long way historically. What we have in this graph, I've tried to summarise all that data for crayfish for the last uh, 30 odd years or more. And this is abundance up here. Uh, I've divided the data into decades. That's the 1970s, 80s, 90s, 2000 and 2010. The three different layers here refer to uh, Tafanui protected zone here. The fished area outside Tafanui in the foreground here and this is Mamifongata Marine Park through here. The protection that came into those places, uh, different types of protection, came in in the mid-1980s where these dotted lines are. And you can see that um, in the area outside the protected zone of Tafranui, crayfish numbers dropped away and have stayed at virtually zero for a long, long time. In contrast, in the protected zone at Tafranui, once protection came in, the numbers of crayfish just kept on increasing, and they're still increasing now, after roughly 30, 30 years or so since protection came in. Quite dramatic. At Mimifongata, the numbers continue to decline. Unfortunately, I haven't got very recent data yet or for the 1990s, but the trend is pretty obvious with no commercial fishing even just recreational fishing, it has not allowed the crayfish numbers to recover. They've continued to decline, and until now, uh, I know they're, they're way down, uh, pretty, pretty low numbers. If we look at the reefs at Mimifongata, this is an aerial photograph showing some of the northern reefs around the park there. And uh, from those earlier photographs, you know what uh, Kinnebarrens look like now in aerial photographs. All this pale coloured rock, all through here and over here, is all Kinnebarrens. No kelp. A little bit of shallow mixed weed close into the intertidal rocks, and a little bit of kelp showing up in the deeper water here. But the rest is severely impacted Kinnebarrens caused by too much fishing for crayfish and snapper in particular. So the moral of the story is pretty obvious. If you let the snapper return and you let the crayfish return, they're going to deal to the kinna, get the kelp forest coming back and improving the biodiversity, getting it back to something closer to natural. And we can do this in marine protected areas, marine reserves, uh, anywhere around the country if we put our mind to it. We definitely need a whole lot more and the sooner we get onto it the better. Thank you.